All right, so today we're gonna to be changing the hydro boost on my 2001 Chevy Silverado with the 8.1 liter gas engine. My unit's leaking, it has been rebuilt once before and it's leaking again, so just time to get a new one. Uh, I have a new remanufactured one. I'm typically not a huge fan of remanufactured parts, but I'm also not a fan of paying four, $500 for a part. Um, so today we have a Duralast, remanufactured unit from AutoZone with a lifetime warranty. It was $196 with a $49 core charge. So we're gonna pull this unit off, uh, clean up the frame and everything, and show you how to put a new one on. <clears throat> so let's get into changing it. First things first, we're gonna get, start by taking off this line right here with the squeeze clamp, and then the two hard lines. This one is, a, I believe, a 16 or a 17 millimeter, and that one's an 18. And we're gonna take off this 15 millimeter nut on both sides of this master cylinder, and then we'll work on the inside of the cab. All right, now be careful because there will be fluid coming off or coming out of this. All right, now for the other two lines. 18 on that one, and 16 on this one. Once you get those broken loose, should be pretty easy to take them off. Once you get them off, slide them out of the way, put them somewhere where they're not gonna leak. So now we're gonna take off the master cylinder. You don't have to disconnect any of the brake lines. It's just a 15 millimeter on each side and it is a, a bolt. So I believe it's a 15 and a 13. And then same thing on the other side, 15, 13. master cylinder just slides right out as you can see where the leaks coming from it's right in the center bore um, there's a weep hole right there so it's just time for a new unit um, I didn't rebuilding these aren't isn't terrible but I'm kind of uh, over it the next step is inside the cap so the white plug right here on the brake pedal there's a clip on that and that clip you kind of just hook it and it slides off it's a keyhole style clip you hook that you slide it off and then you wiggle the actual brake light switch and it pulls the connecting rod off of the brake pedal and then what i like to do is tie the brake pedal up out of the way so it's not flopping around while i'm taking the bolts out after that it's held in by four 15 millimeter bolts and then just be careful that it, the unit doesn't fall out of your truck when you're taking these off so i'm going to remove those it's going to be hard to film at the same time so i'm just going to remove those and we'll check back in when we're about to pull the unit out okay so now <clears throat> we're completely loose you just have to finagle this thing out of here. Be mindful of your lines, your master cylinder, and there it is. All right, so you can see here, I did do a mod on this before when I first rebuilt it because there's two seals on this shaft which caused it to leak into the cab of the truck and onto the floor. You can't just take this piece out. This is staked onto here. So what I did before was actually make a pretty much an adjustable uh, brake pedal. You don't have to do this, um, but that's what I did if I since when I rebuilt it. I cut it off, I tapped both ends of the piece and used a coupling nut to attach it. Um, and that's how I managed to rebuild it the first time because it was leaking into the cab and now it's leaking onto the frame of the truck. So if you're rebuilding yours, that's what you can do. You just gotta measure the throw when you have the unit disassembled because this doesn't go all the way into here, it only moves about an inch so but now here's the remanufactured unit comes with two new o-rings and directions um, so we're going to take this out of the box and we're going to put it in all right so now we got the new unit in it's all tied up in the uh cab of the truck brake light switches back on brake light uh or brake pedal is hooked back up 
So now we're gonna change our O-rings on our lines. The new kit comes with it and then put everything back together. After that, we're gonna do the bleed and refill and we'll be good to go. So now once you got the truck jacked up, you can take your dipstick out. What you're wanna, gonna wanna do is spin the wheel a few times pump, while pumping the brakes. Check your fluid level and keep doing that. And then you're gonna start the truck, spin the tires, pump the brakes, check for leaks, and check your reservoir after you shut the truck off to make sure that you're topped off at the full level. Good thing this is a new other tool. All right, so the new unit's installed. No leaks, we just checked it. Just checked my fluid, we're topped off. Um, we had to bleed it quite a few times with the truck jacked up, just spinning the wheel back and forth while pumping the brakes and then checking the fluid. Um, if the truck's not running, uh, you can run it or you can do the bleed without the dipstick in and that seems to help get some more air out. Um, and then I went and cleaned all the old fluid off the ground and off the frame and all that which uh, it appears to have eaten the undercoating on my truck. Nice shiny bare metal in there. No big deal. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, shoot some spray paint on that and uh, we're good to go. So very simple process. Uh, it only took me about 45 minutes to change the part um, and then an hour to bleed it. Uh, you could probably do it faster, but I was filming. So anyway, I hope this helps. Ho hopefully, if you have this similar issue, then you can get it fixed. Uh, AutoZone for the part or anywhere else. You can rebuild it, um, but like I said, I rebuilt mine before and started leaking again. It appears that there might be a hairline crack in the housing. So if you're going to repair it, double check to make sure there's no cracks or anything in your housing. And uh, yeah, you'll be good as new. All right, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps. Y'all take it easy.